Hey everyone, it's Shreya from Milton Debate, and today we are going to be talking about the summary and final focus. So the summary and final focus are one of like they're probably like the more important ones of the speeches, especially in your debate round, primarily because this is where you start to consolidate and this is where you start to focus on the main ideas. So let's stick with the topic that we've been discussing. So chocolate ice cream is better than vanilla. Better than vanilla. So let's say that you are pro, so you're arguing that chocolate ice cream really is better than vanilla. So this is kind of like the way you structure your entire summary in the first place. So generally what you want to start off with is you want to go over voters. So voters are basically kind of like, think of them like contentions, except they're found in the summary. They're kind of like reasons to vote for you. To vote. You, there we go. Um, so essentially you're kind of like telling the judge, judge, we have two main voters in this round and here are the two main voters. And so you're kind of like telling the judge and explaining to them that based on these two reasons alone, we want you to vote for us because these two reasons outweigh any reason that the other judge could the other side could really give you so you can always start off with a framework or kind of observation so this is kind of like so judge whoever like can preserve the more lives or whoever can improve the global economy should be able to win the round so generally, if you're going to stick with an observation, you want to make sure that this observation really helps you when you're discussing your voters. And so now let's go over the possible voters that you could do. So you're pro and the topic is chocolate ice cream is better than vanilla ice cream. So voter number one is the economy, for example. So we've kind of been talking about how the like harvesting of the cacao bean actually like improves the global economy because of more employment as well as like a decrease in poverty poverty so decrease in poverty so this is these are kind of like your impacts so when you're talking about a particular voter you want to make sure that you're really discussing the impacts and not the argument itself so you can kind of like give a one sentence explanation as to like why it's important that we focus on the economy and kind of like the impacts of if we focus on the economy especially in the aspect of this particular topic we're going to see an increase in employment and an in and a decrease in poverty which is good for xyz and why is that important really and so kind of like after that you can also extend the argument itself so you can also add some additional like links and arguments but you want to make sure that um, if you're going to do this, they're all relevant to whatever you're discussing. So you don't want to bring in like suddenly environmental issues if the entire scope of the argument itself has purely been about the economy or about like the politics behind it as well. So you also want to make sure that when you're doing the voter itself, you want to make sure that it's really clean and it's really um, easy to understand. Because for you, it might seem like really easy because you've been debating this particular topic for a really long time. But for the judge, it's not necessarily like you probably can't, you need to walk them through your thought process and you need to explain this is why it's relevant. So you want to make sure that it's really interactive. So really the entire point of the summary is to prove that your arguments are better than your opponents. And so you can do this by doing a few main things. So let's talk about how you can do that. So basically you have several different options as to like kind of impact and outweigh. Um, so you can talk about the magnitude, um, you can talk about the time frame, um, time frame, and you can also talk about kind of the logic behind your arguments. So you want to make sure that if you're going to use logic, you want to make sure that it actually makes sense and it's not, not something like really far-fetched and something that really doesn't work out in the end. So magnitude is kind of what it sounds like. So magnitude is like if you help like like 10 people other than like more it's more than one person. So be, because you're helping a lot more people by, for example, employment or decreasing poverty, you're gonna be able to like, you're gonna be able to access those impacts based on magnitude and scope as well. 
time frame is also really important because let's say that you're talking about something like saving lives. So let's say like you say that the cocoa bean itself has a lot of like different vitamins. So those vitamins basically lead to a longer life. Longer life. So once you say that these vitamins lead to a longer life, the issue is time frame, because your opponents could always say, wait, so sure you might have a lot more like vitamins and stuff, but also like, when are you gonna be able to see the impacts of the cocoa bean? When are you gonna be able to see in like how much longer is your, is your life really gonna be if you consume a lot more chocolate than vanilla? So kind of like things like that are some things that you can also watch out for and talk to your opponent and ask them about too. And then logic is kind of like self-explanatory. You're kind of using logic to really flesh out your argument and really explain it as to why it's important. So you might not necessarily need evidence for this, but if something like that your opponent say logically doesn't make sense, then you can call them out on it and it'll and then it'll work out because the judge will be able to understand, okay, this particular argument doesn't make sense because of what you just said. So with that, we will be ta talking about the final focus and I will be passing the final focus stuff onto my partner, Joe. Hey guys, this is Shreya partners, Shreya's partner, <laughs> Joe, talking about final focus. So the final focus is actually um, fairly simple to write if you have a good summary. Um, and I'm lucky because Shreya's summary is always really good. But usually summaries are comprised of voters. So let's say that for this particular summary you have three voters. So for the final focus, I just, you use the exact same voters. But in the final focus, you can condense it down even more and just make sure that you reference things that happened in the debate, but not verbatim. So for example, if one of the um, warrants under your voter was like a specific card, you wouldn't have to read that card in the final focus. You could just say, reference the 113 percent card that we read to you in summary that says harvesting cacao gives three million jobs to three million people or something so you don't have to do that which gives you way more time so you're just gonna go off of your voters so you can do like the economy you can do um like health um and then i think those were that we had in the previous video but if you have those two voters and you just go by the warrants and you condense them down basically as far as you can um it's also at this point where you can um include other things that happened in the round um considering you are condensing down more so under the health argument you can supplement that by saying like not only is vanilla helpful or well your team chocolate but not only is vanilla harmful but like chocolate is is good for you um since you are condensing down more you can do a few things here so you can do um impact analysis which is something i really enjoy doing so basically it's the same thing as the summary video but if their impact is you know you get to save 30 people in like 30 years but you can save you know like 10,000 people in like one year. You can definitely mention that. Um, you can also say that like their impact is never going to happen because it's based on the assumption that vanilla is good for you when we just told you that it's not. Um, you can also do like feasibility. So which is basically like, what's the probability of this happening? You know, like, do we know a time frame or do we know like a scope? Do we have actual proof that this will happen or is this just something that like they speculate about? So if their proof is, if you eat a bowl of vanilla ice cream a day, you'll live for an extra two years. But like, what's the feasibility that people are actually gonna eat a bowl of vanilla ice cream every day? Because like chocolate tastes better, right? So the final focus, once again, it's the easiest to write. It's pretty easy to deliver. Um, you get two minutes 
but just make sure that you condense it down, compare the impacts, compare the feasibilities, and then just go based off of the flow summary. So if you have any other questions for us, comment them down below, email us. Good luck in your debates.